Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Wellversed. Lovely to be together. The sun is actually shining in Benoni today. We were wondering what that yellow thing was up in the sky. We're busy drying out at the moment, but it's good to be able to greet you, and I trust and pray that you are well. We're going to continue in Mark's Gospel again today. At this time, I'm in Mark chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 17 to 25, and I am going to read it. Depending on which version of the Bible you read, the subtitle is The Rich and the Kingdom of God, or The Rich Young Ruler, or many little definitions, but it's the same story. So let me read it to you, Mark 10, from verse 17 through to 25. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, and you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher declared, all these I've kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. I love that sentence. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. That's a tough little passage, folks, when you just reflect a little on it. It's pretty definitive in what it's saying. And to put it another way, I think the question the man was asking Jesus, reading between the lines, was, how can I be saved? What must I do to inherit eternal life? How how can I be saved? And perhaps the question, how can I be saved, is deep, deep in the heart of all of us. Now, on the face of it, in terms of this passage, this man had everything. He was wealthy, he had status, and so on. But he was still looking for eternal life in heaven. He was still looking for something else, something more, something special. And deep in the question is the fact that he was thinking in worldly ways. He was asking about wealth and, and that sort of stuff. And... He thought to himself that he was good. He said it, you know, I've followed the law. And he thought that to obtain eternal life, he would gather all his wealth around. And so in his mind, I've just got to be good. And he was asking Jesus, do I need to do more? And from a legalistic perspective, this man had everything. And he he was faultless. Uh, He had wealth, he had status, he had all these things. And yet, he still was not sure whether he was saved. And I wonder how many people listening to this are in this place or have been there. How often we ask ourselves, am I doing enough? Is my life worthy? All these sort of questions. And if we could only obey the law perfectly in every respect, We believe then we are going to get eternal life. But there's one problem. No one ever has achieved what I'm talking about here. And James actually says that in his letter in chapter 2 and verse 10. You know, none of us achieve this perfection. And in simple terms, he and we break the first of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other God before me. And if you stop and think about it, If that comes first in our lives, no matter what we're doing, whether you're mowing the lawn or teaching your children or whatever, we've got to put God first. And he and we break it all the time. Mark chapter 12 and verse 30. Also Deuteronomy 6.5. You can look at those in your own time. But in essence, what we're saying here is, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength, and then all these things will be added to you. Got to get our priorities right. Who comes first? What comes first in my life and in your life? Now this man that comes to Jesus, yes, he'd loved God to some extent, 
but he'd not given God all of his love. He hadn't given it everything that he had over to God. And I guess that all of us, a greater or lesser extent, have been there or are there. There's always that little bit that we want to just hold on to. That, you know, maybe, maybe I can just keep this one on the side. And then you'll see it in verse 21. It kind of begins with the good news. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, and it's love. Love for God and love for our neighbors. It starts there. A relationship with God and a relationship with one another starts with love. And you can read that in Mark 12, verse 30, a little further on. And so here's the heart of this little passage about this rich young ruler, as many people call it. The law teaches what we must do, but does not give us the power to do it. Can I say that again? The law, and we're reading it, teaches us what we must do, but does not give us the power to do it. The law leads us to Jesus Christ. You'll find that in Galatians 3.24. But the law cannot save us. And I think far too many people miss this, that the law can't save us. It is only by faith in Jesus Christ alone that we can be saved. And that's not by works of the law. It's not what we do. Put it another way, it's what Jesus has done. We've got to understand this, my dear friends. It's all about Jesus. In telling this young man to sell his possessions, he wasn't giving him a new law to follow, but Jesus knew that love of possessions was preventing him from giving his life to God. He had his priorities a little skewed. And I sense that many, dare I say most of us, are in the same place. This phrase struck me while I was doing this preparation. We cannot serve both God and money. We've got to get our priorities right on this one. We can't keep them on an even keel, as it were, or or level peggings. The bottom line is in this little passage with this rich young man, it's all about priorities. And in this context, God first. And in your context and mine, even this morning, God first. And then the rest follows. As Scripture says, all these things will be added to you. And so in simple terms, all Mark is saying in this passage of Jesus is get your priorities right. Are we rich or poor spiritually? Pause a moment this morning. Are you, am I, rich or poor spiritually? And it's not just about money. I think it's about priorities. Probably just to end. Where are our priorities Where does God fit into our lives in terms of the priorities we set for ourselves? I think it's a no-brainer that our fundamental priority is God first. And everything else flows out of that. And I pray that you can maybe spend just a few moments reflecting on what I've just said. Can we put God first? Can we put Jesus Christ first in our lives? And then the rest falls into place. Maybe we can leave it there. Let's just pray. Oh God, it's so easy for us to get sidetracked. So easy for us to find different priorities in our lives. And and slowly but surely, you kind of slip down our list of priorities. And maybe it's good that again this morning we can just Take a moment to re-establish uh, the proper priorities for our lives and to put you first and to invite you now in this moment, O oh Lord, please come and take your rightful place in our lives, in my life, number one. And Father, if I can, if I can do this and if those who are listening to me can do this, 
then the priorities re-establish themselves and, and our lives begin to grow and develop and move in a way that gives honor and glory to you. And so bless us as we go now, O oh God, and, and as we just reflect a little on putting you first and allowing you to take your rightful place in our lives. Thank you for our time this morning, O oh God. Bless us now as we go into our day. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So go and have a wonderful day, friends, and may God bless you.